Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Beyond the Message. I like to take the time every week to just go a little bit further from the weekend message. Now, if you weren't with us this weekend, I'd encourage you to go online. You can go on demand or you can go on YouTube and catch up with the message. We're in this series called Hot Topics. And I think uh, this is a really important series. We've laid the foundation that we're gonna talk about some really important topics that are really hot for you and for the world we live in, uh, especially in this really, really intense season that we live in in our world. And this weekend we talked about social justice. And so I wanna kinda go beyond the message on this. Now, again, the idea of social justice is really more of a shotgun idea, especially in our context. There's, there's a lot of ideas. Like you could not get a real definition of social justice. So what we've done at Riverbank this weekend, I really just said, hey, you know what, we're going to define it as Christian justice. Now, let me give you a great definition from one of my favorite theologians. His name is Dr. Tony Evans. Dr. Evans says this, Chris, it's Christian justice. Instead of social justice, let's call it Christian justice. And here's the definition, the fair and impartial application of the rule of God's moral law in society. Let me say that again. It's the fair and impartial application of the rule of God's moral law in society. And I just want to remind you what God's moral law is. God's moral law, Jesus said it himself when he was posed the question like, what is the law? What is the greatest of the laws? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second command is just like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So what we say is, well, it's love God and love people. That is God's moral law. And for you and me, we should be a people who put that into practice. So I want to take this at a different angle, knowing that we are supposed to be a people who are compassionate. Let's look at who God is. Let's look at who he, he is. Because when we look at who God is in his, um, you know, in his personality, in his being, it says in Psalm uh, chapter 89, in verse 14, this is such a powerful scripture. It says, righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Well, let me just kind of give you an image here. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. What this is saying is God in his play, his foundation, the, the setting of his position of authority as the God of this universe encompasses, watch this, righteousness, and this is the one that we don't have a hard, uh, like as Christians, we do not struggle with this one. This idea of righteousness, that means right doing. He, he demands righteousness because he's God. That's why he sent his son Jesus to come and be right for us so he could pay the price for our sins and make us righteous. But there's an element of living a right life too. And as Christians, we want to pursue that. And watch this. This is where politics comes in. Politics comes into play because in the Christian world, there's a political party that uses the platform of righteousness to get votes. It uses the platform of really good moral law to get votes, to get people to support that. God is a God. His, the foundation of his throne is righteousness. But we miss this one oftentimes. The the foundation of God's throne isn't just righteousness, morality, but the foundation of God's throne is also justice. They're inseparable ideas, yet we have separated them in our politics. In American politics, we have two parties that have chosen each of these uh, foundational truths of God and his position, a God of righteousness and a God of justice, and have divided the people. You see, God is a God of justice too. Justice mean is he's seeking, as we spoke of earlier, he, there's a fairness, there's an equality that God wants, seeks, and desires for all people. And yet Christians, for the most part, and I'm, I'm guilty as anybody, I tend to gravitate towards the morality side, the righteousness side of God. And we forget that God also demands justice. And so for us as Christians, let's, in this, in this season, of unbelievable craziness in the world, uh, in our country in particular, with the election looming, right? Let's consider 
God and his foundation. Let's consider God and his throne. Let's consider God and, and those, those things that we just read in Psalm chapter 89, verse 14, that righteousness, morality. Let's think about some of the moral issues uh, that are important. And uh, next week, we're going to speak about some of the moral issues. Uh, one of them is abortion, a big one, right? And I, I don't know many Christians who say, well, let's ignore that. No, no, that's an issue. That's something, and again, we'll tackle that hot topic next week. Tune in. You don't want to miss it. But there's other moral issues uh, that are addressed in politics, not just, you know, um, the whole uh, the whole idea of abortion, but, you know, same sex. That is something that is addressed in the moral side, right? Like the marriage issue, right? That's not something that many Christians will waver on, right? That's something like, hey, that's a moral issue, the righteousness of God. But what about the justice of God? And that's what we spoke about this weekend, and I want to challenge you. We, we said that the ultimate way that we can practice justice and honor God, that is part of who he is, and he demands justice, is for you and me to practice justice through compassion. The story you all know is the Good Samaritan, and the Good Samaritan is the greatest story that God has given us, a great illustration that Jesus told 2,000 years ago to empower you and I, an illustration for you and me to look at and say, that's how we show compassion. No matter the person, no matter the background, no matter their situation in life, we should always be seeking good for them, seeking to love them, pick them up out of the gutter, love them, sacrifice for them, whatever it takes, because that is the heart of God. He's a God, not just of righteousness, but he's a God of justice. And I just want to remind you, Christian, we can't separate the two. We can't, we can't disassociate justice from who God is. It's part of his being. It's our part of his foundation and throne. And so justice in this time we live in right now, look, I have some friends who are friends who have uh, uh, friends of color, right? And they're, they're navigating through this really complex time. And when they call me and they want to talk, I listen. I'm not trying to tell them everything, and I know because I don't. I have compassion by listening. I have compassion by speaking words of encouragement to them. I have compassion by saying, how can I help you? I have compassion. That's what Christians do. Christians show justice and practice it through compassion. So I hope that's been helpful for you. It's a really interesting time we live in. The topics we're going to talk about over the next few weeks are going to be difficult, but I think they're important, and I hope you tune in. Remember, the whole foundation for us through this is the lens of absolute truth. Absolute truth says that it doesn't change, and this foundation of God and His throne, He's a God of righteousness and justice, does not change, even in a volatile political season. God bless you guys, and I hope to see you soon.